The 11th of September 2025. While the world sleeps, a Ukrainian asks, What is the billion dollar catch? Telescopes miss a comet erupting with the illumination of 10,000 power plants. It has a tail wider than five moons. This comes from Comet Swan brighter and 200 times bigger in the sky than the infamous Interstellar Visitor 3i, Atlas. Yet it can be found with nothing more than a pair of binoculars. A backyard stargazer has outpaced the best in the world's observatories, changing the rules of cosmic discovery. But why did experts overlook a spectacle hiding in plain sight? And what does it mean when an amateur eclipses the brightest comet in years? On the outskirts of an interstellar intruder's 47-day course of collision, the responses redefine what the solar system keeps from us. And what comes next is even more astonishing. Vladimir Bizigli's nights rarely follow the clock. Despite the fact that automated surveys scan the sky, he sits hunched over a battered laptop, scrolling through transmissions of hydrogen maps from the SOHO spacecraft. On September 11, 2025, just after midnight UTC, a barely discernible blur caught his eye in the Virgo sector, a blue-green plume brightening in the most recent Swan Difference pictures. Bizigli, a veteran of more than 20 comet finds, paused. The shape was no sensor glitch. The cloud grew frame by frame, sharper and extending farther than anything he had already logged. Acting quickly, he ran his personal scripts, flagged the anomaly, annotated it, and posted pictures to the Comet ML mailing list and the Swan Watch channel on Telegram. By 1.30 UTC, he had ruled out every known artifact and filed a formal report to the Minor Planet Center. The object's brightness already near magnitude 7 meant it was visible to anyone with a basic pair of 50mm binoculars. That level of accessibility is almost unheard of in modern comet hunting, where most discoveries lie far below the reach of amateur optics. Within hours, Martin Mashek's team at the check from Telescope confirmed the sighting with ground-based images. The international community leapt into action, trading coordinates and brightness measurements across continents. Bizigli's daily swan mining workflow scanning difference maps for moving hydrogen features had just rewritten the rules of an industry dominated by billion-dollar telescopes. An amateur's careful eye had spotted a spectacle hiding in plain sight. The democratization of discovery was no longer theory. It was real, a comet blazing across the sky, visible to anyone who cared to look. Twelve hours after discovery, the comet's trajectory was already mapped in detail. The numbers are staggering. On September 12, 2025, Swan passed the Sun at just 75 million kilometers, roughly the distance from Earth to Venus. Five weeks later, on the 19th of October, it would thread even closer to Earth, just 0.26 astronomical units 39 million kilometers within Mercury's orbit. Close enough for the comet's tail to span five degrees of the sky, ten full moons lined up edge to edge. But the orbital path is only part of the story. Outgassing jets, powered by sunlight striking cometary ices, release energy at a rate close to 10,000 gigawatts. That is not an error. For comparison, the entire human race, with every power plant running at full tilt, barely produces the same result. In raw power, SWAN is a moving engine room, pushing more energy into space than all the world's cities combined. These numbers are not academic, they set the stage for a rare occasion. A comet bright enough for backyard binoculars, swift enough that its position shifts nightly on star charts. For astronomers, the countdown to perihelion is more than a calendar note. It's a race to capture every possible measurement before Swan's closest approach and before the next act of this cosmic drama unfolds. Most people will never see 3i, Atlas, even with the best binoculars. Its magnitude of 13.3 may sound abstract, but practically, it makes Atlas about 360 times fainter than Swan. On the magnitude scale, every five steps mean a hundredfold change in brightness. So, while Swan blazes at the threshold of naked eye visibility, Atlas is buried deep, hidden from view by all but the largest telescopes. The size gap is just as striking. 
Atlas's coma barely covers a few arcsicans little more than a fuzzy star. Swan, on the other hand, stretches across entire degrees of sky. For most, Atlas will remain a number in a database, a target for professionals and dedicated amateurs with expensive gear. Its exclusivity is dictated not by choice, but by the physics of light and distance. The sky now belongs to both billion-dollar telescopes and the lone stargazer with a pair of binoculars. This is a comet for the elite telescope. Speed alone sets it apart. 3i. Atlas is distinct from any other living comet. Tracked at 58 kilometers per second, it moves fast enough to cross the distance from New York to London in under two minutes. This is not a solar system wanderer, it's a true traveler through space and time, following a hyperbolic path that guarantees a one-way trip away from the sun. At one point, Atlas approached perihelion 1.36 astronomical units or approximately 203 million kilometers from the sun. Teams of observatories across southern Europe turned their most powerful telescopes toward its dim core. The spectra revealed something unexpected, a chemical cocktail dominated by carbon dioxide with an 8 to 1 ratio over water vapor. Even more surprising, the data showed clear signatures of nickel vapor, an element rarely detected in comets and almost never in such abundance. These findings, confirmed across independent observatories, hint at a formation history far from our solar system. For researchers, Atlas's faint glow conceals a trove of clues about the chemistry of other star systems. The excitement within the professional community focuses less on spectacle and more on unlocking the secrets locked inside this fast-moving exotic visitor. The October blackout, October 8th, draws a hard line across the sky. Both Swan and Atlas slip behind the sun, dropping below 20 of solar elongation the minimum angle needed for any ground-based telescope to safely observe them. For a total of 11 days, from October 8th to 18th, Earth's entire fleet of observatories is effectively blind. Even the most cutting-edge instruments are powerless against the sun's glare. No images, no spectra, no real-time tracking. The blackout arrives at the worst conceivable time just as Swan approaches Earth and Atlas nears its solar flyby. All of the action, the jets, the transformations, the drama, if anything happens, it happens unobserved. The timing is brutal. The 47-day window between Swan's perihelion and Atlas's peak is sliced in half by this invisible wall. Astronomers run simulations, check ephemerities, and share anxious forecasts across forums. Yet nothing disturbs the silence. The sky holds its secrets until the comets reappear, leaving a void in the record that no technology can fill. Disagreement in the data. The orbit of Swan is written in disagreement. At the minor planet center, analysts fit the available data to a 1,400-year return period suggesting a comet that could revisit within the span of recorded history. At NASA's JPL, the same comet, viewed through different assumptions and low-precision pre-discovery images, stretches to a staggering 20,000 years. The split almost 19,000 years apart shows not rivalry, but the true limits of what can be known from data collected just weeks before the comet vanished behind the sun. Both solutions are provisional, each depending on trust in faint pixels from stereo or a handful of ground-based points. As the blackout drags on, clone orbits and Monte Carlo simulations pile up on institutional servers, but the gap remains. This goes beyond academic exercise. Every amateur with binoculars and every professional with access to a major observatory is part of a global endeavor to discover the truth. Numerous reports arrive from Europe, Australia, and the Americas. Each measurement is uploaded live, cross-checked in real time on community forums. Even as the blackout silences optical telescopes, the conversation never stops. A new player. Comet Lemon. Meanwhile, a different player enters the scene, Comet Lemon. With a magnitude for brightening of its tail within a few weeks, the sky becomes a laboratory. 
Every observer from the backyard to the research institute becomes a collaborator. The unanswered questions how long Swan will vanish, what secrets it conceals, and whether its orbit is short or epic become the story's driving force. Science here is not a set of answers, but a living process, crowdsourced and unresolved. On September 11, 2025, Vladimir Bazuki used NASA's Soho Ao Swan instrument to identify a comet for 100 times brighter and larger than the Interstellar 3i Atlas. As confirmed by the Czech Academy of Sciences, Swan's 2 to 5 tail and peak brightness of magnitude 6.2 made it visible to anyone with binoculars. By contrast, 3i Atlas, despite being the most rapid interstellar visitor, measured at 58 kilometers per second, remained 360 times dimmer and accessible only to advanced telescopes. Ten days before their earliest approaches, both objects disappeared behind the sun, leaving a critical gap in observation. Disagreement between JPL and the Minor Planet Center over Swan's orbital period ranging from 1,400 to over 20,000 years remains unresolved. Despite global efforts and real-time tracking, key questions persist. Why did an earlier comet of magnitude 6 escape detection? Citizen scientists, professionals, and amateurs alike provided an uncommon convergence this season. A spectacle rivaled by none in brightness, scale, and mystery confirmed by three independent observatories across continents, 